Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah. God bless. Love you. Hey, everybody. God bless you. You're going to love this video today. We're talking about the fact is that we are no longer under the law of sin and death. We are under the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. We're going to be dealing with Romans 8. We're going to start from Romans 8, verse 1 through 4. Focus on the fact is that we have no condemnation if we are in Christ Jesus. That's where we want to operate. We want to operate in the spirit, not in the flesh. So the study, this video, is all about recognizing we're free from the law of sin and death. We don't need those guardrails in our life. We need the guardrail of love. Amen? God bless. Check you later. Hallelujah. <laughs> yeah. Amen. Hey, welcome. Uh, I want to get into the Bible study tonight. It's Thursday night. Uh, I want to talk about the, the Romans 8-2. And the title I have is Why You Must Be Free from the Law of Sin and Death. I really think you need to take a look at this because I'm trying to make a point that I think a lot of people are not really catching on to. So, <laughs> and, 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 and I had a good conversation with one of my uh, uh, buddies, and hopefully when you see this video, he, he, you know, he'll say, okay, cool, got it. Or he's going to say, well, uh, you, you, you got to understand where I'm coming from. Uh, but let's pray. Father, thank you for the opportunity to come to worship, praise your holy name. Father, I pray that this 10-minute uh, video uh, I'll be able to convey your word that you want for the day. I thank you for what you're about to do, and I look forward to allowing the Holy Spirit to use me, get me out of the way, let the Holy Spirit have his way, and change somebody's life to include myself. In Jesus' name, man. Amen. Man, I, what, I, what I have here, now I'll go ahead and put down to the, uh, show you the slide. Uh, <laughs> the, 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 the slide title, you can see that it said, Why You Must Be Free from the law of sin and death. That was a conversation I had with a good friend of mine, a, a solid brother, solid man of God. Uh, but I think a lot of people, uh, his, his position was that we're still under the law. Uh, and and I, I, I sent him a note and I hope he got it. We, and I like the next time we meet, we'll be able to talk about it. Uh, here's the problem about being under the law after you receive Christ. See, the problem is that most people, and and I know people got this issue. I don't know. I'm really kind of kind of concerned a little bit. Most people sit there and believe that if they conquer an area of sin in their life then they, they have arrived, not knowing that there's other opportunities, there's other things that is considered by the Levitical laws as sin. Uh, there's, 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 I think sometimes we forget about the fact of the, you know, the ones that doesn't seem to stick out as much and the ones that is popular uh, is what we call sin. What do I mean, what's popular? I'm talking about this. Uh, a lot of people are very comfortable talking about uh, somebody committing adultery, somebody murdering somebody. Uh, people are comfortable about uh, somebody stealing, you know, some of the obvious things. But they, they don't, they're not realizing that there's other things such as unforgiveness that people have. I mean, that's, 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 there's no question about it that a, a Believers, come, people coming to the body of Christ, have some valid reasons for not forgiving people. I mean, and you know, I don't need to say them, but most people know this. There's some things that you know somebody did to them, uh, did to somebody they love, uh, took their money, took their job. You know, caused all kind of wacky stuff in their life that they 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 have some unforgiveness toward those people that did them wrong. I mean, 
that, that's a that's a human nature. Not not to say that that's something that God wants you to do. Not to say it is okay, because that's the whole point I'm trying to say. If we're if you're coming to Christ and you're under the law of sin and death, that's the law we're talking about, then that means you, you're supposed to die, right? And, and Christ came to give life and life more abundantly, so now we got a dilemma. And I think that's a lot of people that have a problem with is how can you be born again as a Christian and, and still sin or keep on sinning? And I, I want to submit to you that everybody that's listening to this tape, man, There's a, when you get born again, and I'm going to read some of these scriptures here, and I think you'll like them, and we'll read the first set of slides, and we probably won't get to it until we do like part B or something like that, or second session or something. But <laughs> the point I'm saying is that most people, I know some of you can come into the body of Christ, and you're instantly delivered from your could be from pornography, from uh, being an adulterer, a liar, or what you could be instantly delivered, alcoholic, you instantly delivered. I just don't see that happening with a lot of people. And, and that's not to put those people down because the bottom line is see, I'm understanding that we grow in grace, uh, and then we need that grace in order to work on the issues that we have, shortfalls, I call them shortfalls, sins or, or things that we have areas of, of issues with, takes time. I, I know some of your civil science, you got it going along and you, you got it squared away. I'm not seeing that. And in a lot of cases, some people hide some of those areas that, that if you saw what's going on in their mind, or if you saw what they do in the back and boom for the corner in the dark, then you'd be like, well, I thought you were saved. And the person is saying, well, I've seen Jesus Christ, the person who wants to save me, but I have some strongholds in my life. And I need Christ to help me be delivered from that because I don't need, you can't deliver me. I wish you could, but you can't. All you can do is kind of be, you can, you can try to just be around me all the time and then put a hedge of protection or fence me or keep me from doing something wrong. But the minute that you're not with me, and the opportunity comes, people have a tendency to do those things that they have weaknesses or strongholds in, and they got to deal with that. And I said before, the Bible said in 2 Corinthians, for the weapons of, weapons of our warfare are not cardinal, but mighty through God for the pulling down of strongholds, casting their imaginations, and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. Most people got a problem not recognizing that it takes time. Not everybody. It's a super saint. You got it. You can square away. You can get yourself squared away. And you don't have, you, you instantly say, got you. But the people, there's a large portion of people coming to the body of Christ. And they have strongholds. They come into the body of Christ with strongholds. And when they come into the body of Christ with strongholds, then they, they, they have to work those things, work out of those things, and they're using and relying on the power of the Holy Spirit, not on their own ability. Because you think about it, if a person can come out of the strongholds in life on their own, it was the purpose of having Christ. What was the purpose of Christ according to the cross? I, I, you know, think about it. If you have the ability to come out of your strongholds. And there are some people who can come out of some strongholds. Some people come out of alcoholism. But watch the scriptures I'm going to show you concerning uh, sin. I, I have it right here. And I want, I, want to, I want to go over it with you. And I want to start off with Romans 8, 2. Let's go here. Let's go to it. This is Romans 8, verse 1. 
It said, there's now therefore no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus. Look, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. The, the most, places, most cases when a Christian comes into the body of Christ, there, there, there's, there's, there are a lot of cases, a lot of people, a lot of people, and for a very long time operate in the flesh. I, 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 I'm going to just put myself. I'm not saying that uh, those things are, uh, that I have arrived or not arrived, but I'm saying is that I have to make a conscious decision, since decision daily of the things that I choose to do or choose not to do. And I know that many people have to deal with the same situation. So we, we got, I've reached every, the 10 minutes now, and I'll, I'll come back and uh, start this again. But bottom line is, <laughs> I try to say, uh, Super Saint got it going on. I appreciate you. I really do. I appreciate you. I admire you. I respect you because you have overcome strongholds in your life and you can praise and worship God and lift your holy hands up and you are doing it, you know? But that's not to put anybody else down. That's to, we need to encourage other people to continue to grow and be strong. So uh, we'll come up with set. We'll come up with the next session, right? For this, because I, I, I really do think it's an issue in the body of Christ. We really do need to not be judgmental. And I'm not thinking that that's what you all are, but a lot of cases, most of you are judgmental against yourself. You know your issue. You know your shortfalls. So you're not. You're disappointed. And some of the things that you do. But I'm sitting there saying is, but God, that Romans uh, 8, 1 that we just read, uh, there's now no condemnation in Christ Jesus who walked out the spirit out, who walked out the flesh out of the spirit. It's, it's to be able to grow and allowing your body to move from walking in the flesh to walking in the spirit. And walking the spirit is walking in the word. And that's not just walking in the word, but being seeking to be led by the Holy Spirit. You know, when we said Jesus Christ is our personal Lord and Savior, we said he's Lord over us, not us, Lord over ourselves. And that's what people really want to do. But you really want to sit there and say, Holy Spirit, be with me, guide me, and teach me. Amen. All right. So we're gonna we're gonna stop the uh, the live so I can not stop and come right back in again. Amen. God bless you.